Well, hello there, and welcome to Cooking with Goldbridge. A lot of people have been asking me to do this for a while, and the lockdown has allowed it. So what are we here to do? Well, we're going to do Cooking with Goldbridge, because that's what the show's called. And basically, what I'm going to do is my kind of cooking with my kind of people, which basically means stuff that uh, I can cook at home that I can't currently buy. So we'll be doing, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking about chicken kebab meat and chips, burgers, uh, I'm going to do a nice curry, but today we're going to start off, which if I get asked on Twitter, it tends to be my favourite dish. It is lasagna. And for people who don't know much about lasagna, to me, lasagna, I mean, I do football, so lasagna to me is the Paolo Di Barlo of the football world. Italian, um, and with the right ingredients, can be world class. I've just realised that Paolo Di Barlo isn't Italian, but he plays in Italy and you get my gist. Um, Cornetto, pizza, curry, what, are, what other famous Italian dishes? Um, but look, lasagna to me, it's the king. It's the elite, and it's always been one of my favourite dishes, and there are plenty of things that you can do with it. So we're going to start off with the ingredients, and we'll go through the cooking process. Three onions chopped, uh, three cloves of garlic, which we'll mash into the, with a musher, or you can slice it. Then you've got your veg, which is three slices of celery, three celery sticks sliced, a red pepper and a green pepper, and then three carrots grated. Just, to, just get a grater and go like that. A lot of you are used to that sort of a grip. Get your carrot in your hand like that and just go down the grater like that. Don't do it sideways because it will never work. So like that, grate it, and then when it gets to the end, scrape it down. You've all done it, men or women, don't worry about that. Then you've got See, I'm happy about this. Normally I'd have passata, which is like a, a carton of um, purified tomato. It's much better. It's like a la pasta the mum I mix. But um, we're in lockdown, it wasn't easy to get hold of. So we've got chopped tomatoes, and then you've got some oregano, some Worcester sauce. That's for seasoning, optional. A uh, bit of flour and an oxo cube. So these are the basics for it. I'll pop the link, I'll put the details in the video description. We're making lasagna. So what, what's my background around cooking? Um, not that much really, um, but I do like it. I think that cooking to me is a bit like driving a car fast around a racetrack. I don't do it very often, and I often dream about doing it, but when I do do it, I enjoy it. So let's get on. First thing we need, and we haven't got, you're right, it's the mince. We need the mince, but the mince is boring. You can buy the, mo you can buy the mince from any good supermarket chain, or a butcher, but the mint, there's no prep with that. What you need to do is chop up all your veg, like, and then, yeah, it is veg, there's no fruit. Chop all your veg like that, chop all your onions up like that, and we're ready to move to the cooking phase. Hello, and thank you for joining me over at the cooker, which was the thing behind you on the previous angle. Go back, cash back. Uh, this is my favorite thing in life, it's called a wooden spoon. Um, in a previous job in the Secret Santa, I actually got three wooden spoons, not for cooking reasons, because I like to stir uh, things up. I'm a bit of a pranker, I suppose. But uh, look, first things first, we've got a plate of onions and uh, I've got to be a, bit, a little bit careful with this. We've got a um, bit of sunflower oil, probably two tablespoons of sunflower oil, maybe one actually. And uh, we're just going to chop the, put the onions in there on a low heat. All that, although that to me sounds like it's on a, a high heat. Um, which I hope it isn't. So let's have a quick look at that. You don't want your onions to change colour really. You want it to just get them um, a little bit, oh that is a high heat, you want a low heat. Uh, you want them on a, a low heat just to soften the onions. And what we're basically doing here in a footballing sense is we're building from the back. The ball's with the keeper, it's with David De Gea. He is the onions. It'll make you cry sometimes but he's going to roll it out to the fullback, which I call Aaron Wambasaka in this case because it's Manchester United I'm thinking about. But we might develop further. This is a clove of garlic. Don't eat it on its own. It um, it'll take you, it'll take it'll make you cry. But this is a garlic crusher, or you can just slice it up. You don't need this. I've just got a garlic crusher. You just put it into there like that. Give it a good old squeeze, and it basically crushes the garlic that you then drop in like that. We'll do that a couple of more times as well. So, yeah, for me, cooking is um, it's a good thing, uh, cooking, and um, I'm not going to diminish it, but I must admit, growing up, it wasn't something I used to do a lot of. But I love food, and the funny thing about food is, if you don't eat it, you won't survive. So, we should all actually, I'm not saying be Bear grills, go out and learn how to 
kill a beaver and season it with berries, but to vegetarians out there, kill a mango. Um, but you should have a great basic grasp. And I think with lasagna, there is that temptation to go out and just buy Uncle Ben's sauce or something like that. But you can make your own, and that's what we're going to do. We're making the bolognese here, and we'll make the white sauce on a lasagna. But first things first, onions in there, chopped onions, low heat, with the garlic, and just, just let it relax, let it chill out. And uh, we'll come back to that in a few minutes. And we'll be adding in the minced beef. What's next then? I need to know, I need to know, like, I need to look like I know what I'm doing. Where's my bloody wooden spoon? I've normally all it, I can't find my bloody wooden spoon. Hello, oh, it's in the, it's with the onions. Hello everybody, and welcome back to Cooking with Goldbridge. And uh, we are just still sweating the onions. Sounds a bit wrong, but they are just sweating in a low heat. And next we've got the, the mint, the mint. What's it called? It says it on the package. Yes, this is Lian beef mint, lean beef mints, a kilogram we're gonna use of this. So in goes the mints. Now, remember, what I didn't say at the start, quite naughtily, was that um, that we are doing this, oh shit, don't put the plastic in, don't put the plastic in, and definitely take off the paper strip on the bottom. This is not for vegetarians, by the way. You can do vegetarian lasagna, but uh, yeah, definitely don't put the plastic in. Put the mints in, which I've just done there, and then you're just going to mash, mash it about a bit. But this is going to be for about five to six people, my uh, instructions. I will adjust that. I'll adjust that down because um, you might be just doing it for yourself on lockdown. Or you might be doing it for two or three. But uh, Or just do a big batch. Like this is for five or six people. But you could just do it in a big batch like me. And then you've got, um, you've got it all set and good to go and you can keep some in your freezer or you can just have it for five or six days in a row. Um, beggars can't be choosers. But again, we're just gonna let that mint uh, brown. Uh, we want the mints to brown, so it's in there. I'm probably gonna knock the heat up a little bit. It feels like I've probably gone a little bit too low there. So yeah, we're gonna let the mints brown and then we will move on to the next stage, which will be a spoon of flour and an oxo cube and then we'll add in the, the cut vegetable that we did before. Um, the beef is still, the mince is still cooking away, it's got the onions in there, it's very close to being brown now, but I thought I'd just come back to you uh, while this is going on, because what you could have done at this stage as well is, I haven't done it because I'm just not in that mood tonight, so I don't want something a little bit salty, but you could you could put chopped bacon in there, um, or is it pancetta, which is a basically posh bacon, you could put that in there, so that's an option as well, but as I said, at the start, it's the, it's the unchopped onions, it's the garlic, then add the mince till it's browned, and then we'll be adding everything else in in a minute. Um, people often say to me, what, what got you into, into food? And I would say uh, probably survival. Um, without it, as I said, we're not going to do that well. But um, um, And also my mother, yes, because as a baby, you've just got no idea. You can't be a fussy eater. It tends to be milk from, from the tit or from the bottle. Um, and, you know, people are offended by that. Well, you know, welcome to reality. Um, in the olden days and I'm talking back in the cave days, other than worrying about dinosaurs, um, there was no formula. There was no milk from the old Tesco shop. So it was the boob. And if you're offended by that, it's the reality. I'm sorry. Uh, anyway, back to the mince. Uh, it will start to, at a point when it's nearly brown, you'll start to see a lot of the juice coming off it as well. Um, just keep it going at a nice low heat and it'll all burn off. And then when it's all brown, we're going to add in a tablespoon of flour. In fact, we'll do that now because we're nearly at that point. I've got a spoon, flour, plain flour, nothing jazzy, nothing too jazzy going on here. Plain flour, one spoon of it, sprinkle it over the top of the browned mints and onions and then just stir it in nicely. And what that does is it, it helps to thicken the, the juices in the mint, in the mints, as I believe. And one thing I must say about this, I love a good lasagna, but we're basically making the bolognese here. The lasagna will be the lasagna sheets and the bechamel sauce, which is the white sauce that you layer it with later. What we're doing here, you could easily, 
you could easily do something sneaky and move away from a lasagna and move towards a bolognese. Oh, I, I was. Guess what? You thought you were having lasagna. I can't be arsed. We're having spaghetti bolognese. Just put some pasta on and then tip this on the top. So that works as well. Um, that does work as well. Right. It's getting hot in here. Let's not take off all our clothes. It's getting steamy as well, which is always a problem with shopping, uh, cooking and shopping. Right, I think I might be on a little bit high heat here. Oh, I'm going hotter. Go smaller, there we go. So, what did we say next? The veg. I'm still here. So we've got our plate of veg. We've got carrots, which are... Uh, carrots, for me, have always been a big ingredient in my lasagna. Um, not a lot of people would put lasagna... Um, you can put mushrooms in. You can get, the thing is, you can get creative with the lasagna. As I said, it's the Paolo de Bala of the, of the cooking world. Does he always perform world class? Has he got the right ingredients in? Paul Pogba. Paul Pogba's another one at Manchester United. Has he got the carrots? Bruno. Has he got the red and green peppers? Marcy Ellen Rashford. And has he got the celery around him? You know, Sancho. Pogba's been doing it, a lasagna, without anything. We've now got the ingredients to make it world class. So... I'm talking away because I'm thinking how am I going to do that. I've washed my hands. We should all be washing our hands anyway. In go the carrots. In goes that. And, I can, and now I can use my spoon. The carrots was the problematic bit. So in go the carrots. In goes the celery. In goes the peppers. Notice how I've gone back to using their real names now and not the football analogy. I don't want you to get visions of footballers being put in to a lasagna dish because that will just turn you off. And then... This is now in start. This is where it starts to st look a little bit elite. The mints mixing in with all the oranges and greens and reds to bring together the basis of what's going to be an absolutely fantastic lasagna. So we stir that in. Lovely jubbly. And what I will do at this point, because I have got another camera with me, um, is we can have a nice little look there. And that's looking good. That is looking good. That's your browned mints, your carrots, your celery, your pepper, your onions, your garlic. And we're getting very close to the point now where you can go make yourself a cup of tea. Because we're going to give that a good old... And it's very, remember, it's very hot in there. Those carrots are like... I've gone from being quite cold to that's a very, very hot bath. And I tell you what, it's, a very, it's better than any Radox... Because you've got the warm mint, the garlic, the onions, giving it some deep flavour. And the pepper and celery for the texture. And every, I'll tell you what, everyone's having a great time. They are having a great time. Um, also at this point, optional, stock cube. I don't think I'll get into trouble for being brand specific here. Maybe I will. Um, OXO. But I think other... I think you can get stock cubes from anywhere. This You can get vegetable stock cubes. And basically, you're just going to break it up, which I always find quite satisfying, OXO cube. I had a friend who used to just put OXO cube in a cup of hot water, let it dissolve and drink it. I don't know what the OXO cube does. I would just it's just something that somebody said when I've made it for you before. We put it in, which is good. Give it another stir. And we're moving through the midfield now. We started off with the onions, which was De Gea. He rolled it out to the garlic, which was wan -Bissaka. CDM, Matic is the mince. And now we're adding in the flair. We're adding in the Pogba's, the celery, the Sancho, the Rashford, the peppers, and Martial. But there's one vital ingredient that needs to go into here. And you know I haven't mentioned him yet. It's the person that's going to make it look like a mound of mints and vegetables. To, it's going to make it look like an elite sauce. That's the tomatoes. That's Bruno Fernandes. In you go, Bruno. I've got three cans of this. Remember, I'm doing a big batch. We're doing a big batch here. Three cans of uh, tomato in there. And this is the point where I would usually use passata, which is just a liquefied tomatoes, better quality. I'm using tin tomatoes, which... To be honest with you, I'm not overly happy with, but at this point, you've got to make a decision about what consistency you want, because this is now going to just be cooking off for a while. You can add some water in. If you like it a bit runny, you can add a bit more water in. If you like a thick bolognese sauce, keep it as is, but you don't want it to start sticking to the bottom of the pan. So 
I'll show you another shot in a minute. Okay. Jamie Oliver, eat your heart out. He would as well. Uh, there you see, that's in with the tomatoes in there as well. So that's looking good. I probably will add about half a can of water into that as well. And then what we're going to do is the next bit, which is we'll put the lid on and we'll just leave it to cook. But uh, let me just have a quick check. That is quite good. You know what? I think I'm just going to leave that on a low heat and just let it all cook. Low heat, lid on with a bit of air. Here's something for you. Have you ever realised? Oh, I know it's not the right thing. I'll show you. This is a really good trick. And I only realised it a few years ago. You see this? It's a pan. You see this little hole on the end that you thought it was hanging up? No, it's not. You just drop that into the end of it like that and leave it. You know like they're always dirty? You can just do that. Leave it in there. That's what it's for. You put it in like that. Brilliant. I haven't got one on here. Thinking of getting one. Anyway, we're going to leave that just to simmer. We're going to leave that to simmer and we're going to move on to our bechamel sauce, which is a white sauce because on a lasagna, you have a lasagna plate, which I'm going to show you anyway, and you just layer it up and then put it in the oven. But uh, first bit's done. Bolognese is done. If you're feeling lazy, stop here. Get your pasta on. Leave that to cook for about half an hour on a low heat. And then uh, get your pasta done. Tip it on top of your pasta. But we're making a lasagna. Okay, and there it is. That's your bolognese sauce. It's been on a low heat. I've actually had it on a low heat for well over an hour, so it's lovely and cooked. <laughs> it's lovely and cooked. Gordon Ramsay's got nothing to worry about, but as you can see, it's all cooked down, and that's a lovely bolognese sauce now, which you could make a spaghetti bolognese with, but we're going to make a lasagna. So we've got our bolognese, that's ready. We just need to now make the white sauce so we can just we can construct our lasagna. Right, so we've got our melted butter. Very important that you don't burn the butter. You just want it to melt over a low heat. And then you add your, butter, your flour in, which looks a little bit odd. And again, it's all about not letting it burn. So you stir it all in. Stir the butter in. And you'll create this sort of uh, a paste over a period of time, quite a quick period of time actually. I'm doing this one-handed whilst holding my thing, but as you can see it starts to paste. And you're only going to cook this for probably a couple of minutes, making sure it doesn't burn, and then we'll start to gradually add the milk in. And here we are. The paste is a paste, and it's, uh, it's basically a flour and butter paste. And now what we're going to do because you can't serve that paste up as part of a lasagna, you'd be mad. They'd be like, what is that? It looks like pale diarrhea, which uh, we don't want uh, to talk about stuff like that when we're cooking. So uh, we'll add a little bit of the milk in. And you don't add all the milk in, you just add it in stages. And the great thing about this is, if you just add bits of milk in and stir the milk into your flour and butter paste, the milk gradually will just absorb very quickly. And again, we don't want to burn this. And Straight away, what I've, what I've seen happen here, as I explained it to you, is that the milk has been absorbed straight away and we go back to having a paste. So we go a little bit more of the milk. And we stir it again. And this is probably going to take us about five minutes. And what will happen is that paste will start to become less and less of a paste and more and more of a smooth, glossy liquid. And effectively, that's what you're looking for. You're looking to get to the point where the paste becomes like a tin of freshly opened white gloss paint but obviously don't ever ever and i'm talking to everybody here seriously don't ever use white gloss paint in your lasagna there are shortcuts in cooking but paint is toxic like arsenal fans not all of them some of them are good i'll tell you what dt could never but he's never had a lasagna. Anyway, we're stirring in our milk here. And again, it's still very pasty. And we're gonna, I'm going to have to put about, because I used 100 grams of butter and I used 100 grams of flour. So I need to add two zeros onto that. It's 1,000 millilitres of milk because I'm making a big batch. But for you, you're probably going to halve that down. And I'll put the ingredients in the in the video description as well so people can do this. I'd like you all to have a go at it. 
my whole point of this actually is to get men and, and women, but traditionally, I've always been a man. <laughs> I've always been a man, so I don't know how it is for women, but maybe it's the same. You know, I don't really get enough time to cook, but I do love food. Um, so what I'm going to do with this, and a lot of people have asked me to do it, is just encourage people to cook the sort of food that you want to cook. Like a roast dinner is a challenge. A roast dinner of cooking is a bit like run running a marathon. Whereas a lasagna is more like 800 meters. We can all do it. It takes a little bit of effort and it takes a little bit of fitness, but we can all do it. And you can build up to other things. So I, I want people to get in the comments and tell me what sort of stuff they want, because um, that will, you know, dictate what I do. But I'm gonna do my favorite pizza. I'm gonna do my favorite burger. I'm gonna do my favorite curry. And we've started off with a lasagna, and this is starting to thicken up now. I'll go to a closed shot in a minute, but realistically, we just keep adding the milk and then stir for about 30 seconds so the milk absorbs into it. And then add a little bit more milk till you've run out, and then you will have it. And it will probably take between five and 10 minutes to do the whole process. But mine is now starting to look like a thick porridge, and uh, we'll come back to it when I've added more milk in. So there you have it, that's your white sauce. Nice and smooth and glossy. And what I would, what I would well I'll say it on the next bit actually, we're gonna add in some cheese now. And again, it's, a, it's the 50-50 rule. So if, you've got, if you're making your bechamel sauce out of 50 grams of butter and 50 grams of flour and 500 millilitres of milk, you're gonna put 50 grams of cheese in there, a handful basically, and stir it all up. Um, seasoning is very important you could also put a, a spoonful of mustard in there if you wanted to do it just to give it a little bit of a kick but um, yeah now for the cheese hello everybody so I'm back with my white sauce and we're getting to the exciting bit now so we've got the white sauce we're gonna add the cheese in but very important seasoning is very important and I think I might have missed it on the lasagna bit I always add a bit of uh, uh, Worcester sauce and um, uh, some herbs uh, oregano into my bolognese gives it some added taste Salt and vinegar, no. Salt and pepper. They're the best things when it comes to seasoning. Think about who do you want holding your midfield? Mark Noble or someone like Fabinho or Kante? That's seasoning. That's from Mark Noble up to Fabinho or Kante. That's what seasoning will do to your cooking. So here we go. We're going to add a handful of this cheese, cheddar cheese. You can go better than that if you want. A handful of the cheddar cheese into what is now not cooking the white sauce. I've turned it off the heat. And I'm just going to stir that cheese in with a whisk till it melts nicely. You can hear it, it sounds lovely. Till it's melted. Then we're going to season it with a sprinkle of, oh, I'll tell you what, don't, don't talk, just kiss. Or don't talk, just do. Salt and pepper. Salt. Couple of uh, twists of that, couple of twists of salt, stir that in as well. You've seasoned your white sauce. As I said, you could add a spoonful of mustard in if you want to. And then the next thing, get your oven on. In fact, we should have had our oven on already. You can tell I'm not thinking straight. Oven's already on, 180 degrees, warm it up. Get your oven on, and we're now ready to construct the lasagna to get it in there. And also keep some cheese back. Not because you're hungry and you feel like a nibble. We're gonna sprinkle that on the top of the lasagna in a moment. Okay, we're at the best bit now. We've got our bolognese, beautiful. We've got our white sauce, beautiful. And we've got our lasagna tray. Now, get a bit of butter, a bit of kitchen towel. Just wipe it, kitchen towel, yeah. Butter, butter it. A little bit of butter, just makes it not stick at the end. Right. Bit of bechamel sauce, just a couple of drops around the bowl here. Don't worry about neatness because we're going to get our lasagna sheets, as they call them. And basically, oh, this is my favourite bit about lasagna, lasagna sheet, spread it over to the white bit that's in the bottom of the pan so that the white bit just squashes underneath these lasagna sheets. Three normally will do it, the white, will, the white bit will come in between. Then. We want our bolognese and three good spoon fills in a size this big. Spread it over the top and we're building layers. Layers of lovely lasagna. 
Well, it's not actually technically, it's bolognese, but get that in, sloppy as you like. Boom, lovely, lovely stuff. And as you can see there, I've now got a layer of bolognese over. Don't be careful with that. Again, um, white sauce over the top. I've messed, I've messed up a little bit there, but just a little bit of white sauce. I, I've, I've done the layers wrong, it's my fault. Layer of, uh, it won't make any difference, it's all gonna make the same thing at the end. And uh, another layer of pasta sheets, now the white sauce over the top. And then a bit more bolognese. Don't matter if you spill it. And it's beautiful. That bolognese is lovely. In fact, I just I want to I want to taste it because I just love bolognese. I could I could eat spoons full of bolognese. It's just lovely stuff. Food of the gods, unless you're vegetarian. But you can make a vegetarian bolognese. And then, as you can see, another layer of bolognese. You can see the lovely bits of white sauce coming through. It's nearly tipping out the edge. I don't want to do that. Top it back. Now what we're going to do is have the final layer. So three layers is what you want. Another layer of the pasta sheets. In fact, I might try and just slip four in here, just to give it a good, uh, a good old layer in, a sealed layer. And now, all of the white sauce, you need to try and get it to cover every little bit. So make sure that you've got enough. We, we are going to have enough, which is great. This is going to, this is going to be banging. This is going to be banging. It's going to be a banging lasagna, this. And then cheese sprinkled on the top. So you've just got a white layer on the top now. Cheese on the top. Just to give it a nice sprinkling. Lovely. Can we get a shot of that? On the camera, there it is. There's the camera, there's the lasagna, just so everyone can have a look at it. Beautiful, beautiful. And then we're going to go put it in the oven. Um, and basically, depends on your it depends on your oven, but 180 degrees. And I'd say that's going to go in for a good. 30 minutes to 45 minutes. Just keep an eye on it after about half an hour. And when it's crispy and brown on the top, you don't want to burn it. That's going to be beautiful. Garlic bread, a bit of broccoli with it. I'll give you a picture of it at the end, but smash a like, subscribe if you're new, and get in the comments and tell me what you think. But uh, I'm happy with that. Lasagna, I tell you what, it's the king of gods. And there is the finished beauty in its all its glory. Just come out the oven like the World Cup, it's bubbling. It's still bubbling, but perfection. That is not burnt, that is just the perfect time to bring it out. Bits of gold, bubbling beautiful. Carve that into as many bits as you like. I'll just eat the lot really. No, I won't. It's, it's bloody big. Look, it's taken up all my hops. But that's perfection. That's lasagna. Get to it. Put your back into it and you'll love it.